Hello, welcome back to my channel. This is Bluefin Design and I'm Nikhil. And in today's video, we are going to be talking about Adobe XD. So as you may know, Adobe XD is one of the tools that you can use for designing, um, prototyping and uh, even collaborating with your team members and then sharing uh, your designs with different stakeholders within your organization or outside of them as well. So I've been kind of working on this uh, design process where I walk you through my design process and the different steps that I'm taking on a UX case study. And so I've shared a lot of videos on the different research methods within the research phase and then the different methods and the tasks that you can do in the analysis phase. Right now, I am working on the designs within the design phase. So I'm to that point in my uh, process. And I've shared a few videos on that as well. So if you want to check those out, the link is down in the description. Uh, do give them a like if you like the content and uh, follow along with my design process. So um, if you like this content, so sub subscribe to my channel. It really helps me and motivates me to create more such videos for you. And if you have any questions, put them down in the comments. I'll try to answer them all. So let's get started with Adobe XD. So as I said before, Adobe XD is an all-in-one tool for designing, prototyping, collaborating, and then sharing your designs with the community and the different stakeholders. When you do install Adobe XD on your Mac or a PC, it works for both actually. And when you open the window, this is what you see on uh, as the first window. So Adobe XD actually helps you create or start your project with these preset uh, artboards that we're going to talk about next. So if you're working on a mobile application or a website or anything else, or if you want to add your custom width and height, you can do that here and start the project. But for the purpose of this video, I'm actually working already on um, the project here, but let me show you uh, the application and the interface around. So as you see, you have the by default, like the menu on the top, which you can browse through and have different actions. Um, but I want to, I want you to focus just below that. So you have these three modes as we call it in Adobe XD. The first one is the design mode where you kind of create your designs, whether it's a website or a mobile application, you create your screens and build the design step by step using the tools available to the left over here. So you can add different shapes, you can add text, you can add different lines, you can add like, you can do a lot more when you're in the design mode as well. Now, the next mode is the prototype mode where you can create those interactions and add those wires to your design so you can bring them to life. Now, as you like, you may have noticed already that as I'm switching the modes, uh, the, 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 the window or the toolbox over here, which we call the properties inspector kind of changes as well. And this will change uh, depending on the tool that you're using on the left here and also the element that you've selected. So for example, as I said, I'm already working on the design. So you see like I have different tools available on the properties inspector when I'm selecting a certain item. And when I'm selecting, let's say a text, I have different sets of tool. So it changes depending on the item that you've selected. Now, you also have noticed that on, on the left side here, we have the layer panel. And as when you add different elements like shapes or text or combine different things into folders and add more components, um, uh, all of those will be available for you here in a chronological order, like one above the other. And it's a good practice to arrange them within folders so that you don't miss or you don't lose any of those items at a later point. That's the window in like, you know, the options that you have on the window and the interface. Now this gray area that you see in the middle is called the work area. And all your artboards will kind of stay or live here in this area. So it's a huge space. You can add a lot more artboards depending on what you're working on. Moving on to the next mode, which is the prototyping mode, you see the different set of options on the properties panel over here. The options that are available are basically for you to create those interactions and wires. 
Let's talk about artboards and how you can create artboards in Adobe XD. So from the tools available to your left, you see the second last one is an artboard option. You can also use a shortcut A on your keyboard. So when you select that option on the properties inspector, you'll have these presets that I also talked about before. So they are available here as well. So you can select from the presets if you're creating a mobile screen, you have these different options and you have also some presets, uh, artboard options for a tablet design um, or a website or a desktop design as well in some social media posts. Uh, so these are just templates um, and also for the watches actually. So you have a bunch of templates to use from, but I can just for the purpose of an example, I can just click on it and uh, you see that this one has been created for me. So now let's talk about how to add colors or fill as you call it in the design applications to the different shapes. So in this example, I have a rectangle which I'm going to select and just to zoom in just a little bit so we can see it clearly. So with this shape selected, with any shape selected, you can actually just come to the properties inspector and you can see that we have two options here. First one is fill and the border. So the border is, well, the border around the, uh, around the shape and the fill. So if you click on the color, you can choose from any color that you want from here, choose your um, hues and then saturation and also the value. Um, you can choose the color uh, like this or if you're using like an inspiration panel or a color palette or your branding guidelines, you can directly copy the hex values from there of that color and just paste it in this section. Alternatively, you can also put in the RGB values if you're using those. So you have a lot many options to add those specific colors according to your branding guidelines. But all these that I just mentioned is basically it's a solid color which applies to the entire shape. Uh, now if you want to enter a gradient, you can just select the drop down from here and then select a linear gradient. So now you get these control bars where you can control what color and the direction of the gradient is going to be. So this is a linear gradient. We have radial gradients and again an angular gradients. So you can play around with these options uh, to see which one works well for you. So I'm basically going to just put it back to white because uh, I'm going to show you how to add an image because this is going to where it is supposed to be a carousel which the users can swipe through. So let's see how to add images to the different shapes. Uh, it did not be a rectangle, but you can add like any shape you have, like a triangle, a pentagon, circle, anything, as long as it's a shape. So I have this image selected and um, I'm just going to move it over here and zoom out. So there's many different ways to add images or graphics to your designs. Um, the very first and the most simple one is if you have an image or a graphic downloaded on your machine, you can actually just open it up in Finder or Explorer and um, just uh, as simple as just like, you know, drag it into Adobe XD. And now I'm not leaving it yet, but I'm still, uh, I'm only just going to hover it on the shape and you can see that as, as soon as I hover it on the shape, uh, the shape actually turns blue, indicating that now I can drop it. So as soon as I drop it, um, it, it is going to be masked by the shape. Um, and I do have some functionality like, you know, moving the image around, resizing it. So, so I'm just going to leave it here for this example. So now let's look at the other example. So I have another rectangle, uh, which is supposed to be another image in that carousel. And I'm just going to drag another image from Explorer or Finder. And instead of dropping it on the shape, I'm just going to drop it outside here. And once you have it on the layers panel, you can now, I have the shape and I also have the image with me. So there's two different uh, elements in terms of the layers. So let me just rearrange or resize, I'm sorry, resize the image according to uh, the way I want it to be. 
and now I'm going to select the image from the layers and also the underlying shape. So only with two layers selected, I'm going to right click and then select mask with shape. What it does is if you notice on the layer panel, it creates a mask. And now, although the effect is still the same, I have the shape, uh, which is the mask and the image as two different layers. This is the non-destructive way of adding images into Adobe XD. So now even if you come in at a later point and you decide to change the image, all you need to do is right click on that image layer and replace the image. So those are the two easiest ways of selecting uh, or you know, using or adding images. One is with directly with the shapes and the other one is with using masks. Now let's talk about components. So in Adobe XD, apart from the tools that you have on this menu on the left, like shapes, typography, and all of that, you can also combine certain elements like group of texts or um, images into component. So if you want to reuse the same item again elsewhere in your design, for example, if you have buttons that you want to use, uh, if you have certain images that you want to use again, um, so you can create those into, turn those into components. So now you can use them again anywhere in your design. I have shared a couple videos about components that I think will be really helpful for you to understand how to work with components. So watch those videos after this one if you want to learn more about components. Now let's talk about the asset panel. So you see down here to the bottom left, uh, just behind me, you have these three options as I mentioned before. Uh, right now we are in the layers panel, but if I select the one above it, I'll be taken to my uh, libraries panel. You can create libraries. Now that's a bit advanced. I'll talk about this in a later video sometime. So subscribe to my channel um, if you want to learn about libraries as well. But the first option you see is the document assets. So as you see, uh, the, the components that I talked about just now will show up here in the components section. But uh, apart from components, you can also add character styles that you want to reuse in your designs and the different colors. So example, like if, you, if you're working with a branding um, a strategy or if you have branding guidelines, so you want to have use those, the brands, colors and the typography in your designs. So what you can do is you can use those colors once in your designs with the different methods like, you know, fill or gradients what I usually do is once I've added those colors according to the branding style guides, I select my artboards and uh, so when I select the artboard, essentially all the layers within those artboards are selected, but you can select like individual um, layers with the different colors and then just click on the plus icon over here. So now you'll see that um, all the colors that you've used um, essentially on your branding guidelines have been added here. So moving forward, if you need to add a shape, let's say I'm using a triangle for some reason, then I can just select uh, that color. Let me just delete it. Now I can do the same thing with all the character styles. So uh, with all my layers selected, I will just click plus over here and you'll see that all my character styles have been added. And like colors, you can do the same thing with the character styles as well. Now the best thing here is that I can right click on any of the color from my asset panel and then highlight on canvas. So it's going to show me what layers on or what design, uh, what layers on my design are actually using those colors. Isn't it great? Uh, you can do the same with the character styles. When I highlighted the layers that use this particular character style, I see that these layers are going using it. So it's a good way to kind of see and track um, your design as well. The next thing I want to touch about in this video is using repeat grids. So as you see in this example, I uh, for my design, I want to show the user the different recipes that can, they can use and they can create. So it's basically just um, from a design perspective, it's an image and a text, uh, which is a component. And I have basically multiple elements or multiple copies of those components. 
Um, so to create like, you know, to avoid copying and pasting again and again, what I did is I just created a repeat grid. So I'll show you quickly as to how you can do it. So if I have, let's say a rectangle, uh, you can give a fill, you can add an image, you can give, add a mask and add some description when let's say you have all you need to create a repeat grid. Now I'll come to the properties inspector and then you see this one option on the top here, which is repeat grid. And once you select it, you can see these tools. Now you can also create like a horizontal repeat grid or a vertical repeat grid or both actually, if you want to. So that's just like a basic overview on how to create repeat grids. Now you can actually like, you know, change the spacing between every element. You can have positive, you can have negative, um, depending on how you want to use it. So let's talk about prototyping in Adobe XD. So once I'm ready with my design, or at least I'm confident that I'm uh, able to share my designs with my different stakeholders. Now I'm going to move to uh, move from the design mode to the prototyping mode. And you'll see that the tools available on the left and the properties inspector on the right will change accordingly. So this is where you kind of create those interactions or wires to bring your designs and bring your artboards and screens to life and make them interactive. So with this example, um, I want to have this menu option um, slide in into my design when I click on the hamburger menu. So with that uh, layer or with that hamburger menu, I can select it. What I'm going to do is you can see that blue arrow. So I'm just going to click on that and then I'll see this wire. I'm going to drag it and drop it on this artboard. The trigger is going to be the tap trigger. So when I tap on this um, icon, uh, the menu option is going to slide in. Um, so I can see like I can decide what the type of interaction is going to be or what I want it to be. So I'm gonna select auto animate. I've shared an entire video about the different types of triggers, the actions, the easing, and also the durations for prototyping. So you have like you many options to play around. Do watch that video because I share that in detail. Auto animate is basically um, a newer option within uh, prototyping in Adobe XD where it lets you um, kind of play the differences between the two artboards as an animation. So you have to keep two things in mind. One is that when you want to use auto animate in Adobe XD, the two artboards need to have the same exact layers and the same exact names for those layers and the order as well. So, you can change the positioning, uh, the styling, the colors, the transparency, and all of that for those elements, but the names of the layers should be the same for this to work. So going back to this one uh, and the prototyping mode, um, I created the menu option or the menu bar on this artboard as well, but it is actually hidden. So if we see that, like you see this, uh, on the layers panel, the menu bar is hidden. So I'm going to unhide it. But again, the transparency, uh, the opacity is set to zero too. So here is the exact same copy, but I've just moved it around. And uh, I'm going to set the opacity back to zero because on the home screen, I don't want the menu option or menu bar to be visible, right? So um, I'm going to select, go back to prototyping mode and I'm going to select the icon and create that wire for auto animate. And I also have to go the other way around. So when the menu bar is open, uh, how should I go back to my home screen? So I'm just quickly going to create an interaction here and uh, the type of interaction is going to be the previous artboard, right? So let's see that in action. So I'm just going to click this play or preview. And you see um, here when I click, I see the menu bar um, sliding in from the left. And now if I click close, it goes back. Right? So that's the interaction for auto animate. Uh, the one thing you need to remember here is that when you want to create prototypes, let's say you have like, you know, many screens, 
um, you have to designate a home screen where your prototype your entire prototype is going to begin with so you see when you select an artboard uh, you'll see on the top left corner there's the area to designate your home screen so once you do that you will be creating um, a, um, a flow of your entire prototype and then all the artboards which are included in that flow will turn blue highlighting that they are actually included within that flow so make sure the, the artboards you want in that flow are all highlighted so as i mentioned before um, let's talk about plugins so in adobe xd you can use different plugins and the way you do that or way you access them are through this uh, panel on the bottom left and the binoculars plugins are basically uh, the extensions that you can use with Adobe XD. So if you want to have any extended functionality, you can use that by using a plugin. Uh, plugins are created by the Adobe XD community members and shared with everyone. So everyone can take advantage of those. So uh, thank you so much for creating plugins, um, whoever has created one. Um, so the way you add plugins is you can create, click on that plus icon, it'll take you to the creative cloud um, window and take you to the plugins where you can browse the different plugins for Adobe XD um, you can then uh, if you want um, let's say for example I want to work with anima so what I can do is basically I can just click on get and uh, Adobe XD will install that plugin for me and I can start using that so I've already um, start like installed plugins like icons for design where I can quickly find icons that I want to use in my designs. It's really powerful. Um, some UI faces, um, some default placeholder texts. Um, so I use these plugins from time to time. Um, but I do want to uh, just raise a concern here that um, just be mindful of adding so many plugins to your Adobe XD because it may slow your application down. So only add plugins that you wish to use from time to time. Let's talk about sharing your designs with different stakeholders. So once you've created your designs and you've added those interactions and your prototype is ready and you're confident that this is going to create that or spark that conversation with the different stakeholders, you can come to the share mode. Well, I've already created a link for it, but what you essentially do is that from the flow that we just created, we create a clickable link so that we can share it with the different stakeholders. So what I'm going to do is with that flow selected, I'm going to come here and um, select a new link. When you give a name and when you want to create a link to uh, share with your stakeholders, you have different options to choose from. So you need to decide like the link that you're creating. Um, by the way, you can create multiple links for that one flow. So uh, the link that you're creating, like, is it going to be uh, viewed uh, by the developers or is it for presenting to the different stakeholders or do you want some feedback and add some so that like the your stakeholders can comment on your designs. So there's different uh, options that you can use. Um, one more option is for user testing so that you can share your designs with the users and get feedback from them. So there's different options. So you can select the appropriate option from that. So for example, when you create a development link, the developers will get the information that they need. For example, the padding, the margins, the spacing, uh, the CSS codes, or if it's an application like iOS or Android, they get those snippets of code from the link that Adobe XD will create for you. So you see here, when you select that option and uh, come to this information icon, you will be able to see what options you have for that particular uh, type of uh, link. So once you're happy with the link you want to create, so I'm going to create one for development. All you need to do now is create that link. So Adobe XD has created that link for me. And you can see here that the link is available for you to copy um, and share it with um, either the community on Behance, copy the embedded codes, but I'm just going to copy the link for now. 
So I've opened that link that I just created in the browser and uh, you can see that we have the screens available. So the interaction is available here. And when I click on that hamburger menu, the menu bar pops up. Uh, more importantly, you have these options on the right. So if you see towards the right, uh, your stakeholders have the ability to create or add comments reviewing your designs. Um, more importantly for developers, they have the option to see the character styles, um, the colors that you're using in your designs, um, also the interactions. They also have uh, these uh, styling options for them to use it in the application. So like this one, you can create multiple links to share with multiple stakeholders for user testing, for development, for presentation and uh, so on. So that's all I had for this video. I know it's a little bit long, but uh, we covered a lot of stuff uh, to get you started with Adobe XD. And if you like this video, please leave a like. It helps me and makes me happy because I'm sharing so much content with you. Thank you so much. Um, subscribe to my channel because I'm going to be sharing more such videos um, and more such design videos and design process videos with you. And so you don't want to miss those, right? Uh, share this video with your friends, with your colleagues, with your classmates uh, so they can get started and leverage the power of Adobe XD in their next projects. Also, if you have any questions, just feel free to comment down below. Now, I've also started taking one-on-one -on -one calls. So if you have any questions about your design process or if you're stuck in your design project and you need some feedback, you need some constructive criticism, um, if you're stuck on deciding what you want to work for your capstone project, uh, there's a link down below in the description so you can uh, select the time and book a call with me and I'll make sure I'm available for you uh, on that time. Click on the link down below. Thank you so much for watching. I'll see you in the next one.